Hi, fourth graders, Mr. Height here, and uh, we are going to look at a virtual catapult that we could use um, if you're home and you're not able to have the materials, uh, either the connects or some of the other things um, options. Uh, this would be a totally cool option, um, which would be to use a virtual uh, catapult. So I'm going to show you the website and the catapult. And I will show you how to use that. Here we go. It's our website. And you can see we have our catapult here. Now notice it's already designed. It's already put together for us. But there are a couple things that we can change. Um, so it's very similar to the actual lab that you would be doing with the connects. Um, obviously, we won't be putting it together. But we can still see what the effect of would be of the launch arm. So if we change the height of the launch arm, um, we could totally see how that works. So we can change the elevation, which is totally cool. Um, we can pull the arm back, which is great. My mouse will work. And then there it goes. And the cool thing, yeah, look at that. It even has a little tape measure. Um, and it does have it in uh, centimeters, so we can um, check out in centimeters uh, what we have here. So 280 to 290, so about 290, depending on where you measure from, uh, centimeters. So very cool. So we have a tape measure. The only thing would be time, but um, I did use my phone. I practice using my phone, and you can actually take the time. So if we wanted to actually calculate the speed, we have the distance, so we just need a time. So uh, what I did with my timer is when I got it back to position, as soon as I let it go, I tapped start time and stop time when it hits the four. So I'm able to get to the, and I always just round that off to the nearest second uh, for my time. So I can get distance, I can get time. There are a couple things you can do to design. There's a couple things you're going to want to keep the same. So you can adjust some things on our catapult here. Um, so that's what you would want to do first. So where do you want these different pieces? So this is a pin elevation. So depending on how high you want this bungee cord to be, so you can actually lower it wherever you want. So maybe like right in the middle is where I'm going to put mine. OK, if I can get to 150, all right. Now, once it's at 150 for pin elevation, it's got to stay there when you start doing your um, trials. And the same with the bungee position here. Um, and actually, I like it right there, so I'm going to actually keep it, but you can lower it um, if you wanted to do that. But I'm going to keep that there. And then our firing angles. So you notice when we pulled it back, it hits this little white piece here, which um, once it hits that object, the inertia will make the ball go forward. So you can actually adjust the firing angle as well. And let's see, I'm going to put my about 120. So that's my firing angle. So I would want to keep these three things the same every time. So make sure you write down those numbers where your position of your elevation pin, your bungee position and your firing angle. Those three things will stay the same. OK, there's one other thing that will stay the same is how far back you're going to pull uh, your launch arm. So you'd want to make sure that is the same, too. So if you pulled back your launch arm, let's say I do mine at 145. So I'm going to do mine at 145. It has to be 145 every single time. You can't change that because what we want to see um, if we change our launch arm. So if I go down to 200 on my launch arm, that's going to be my short launch arm. OK, so I'm going to now pull it back. Remember what I said, 145, right? I'm going to pull it back to 145 and then I let it go again. I can time it. And then I can see the distance, so I'm going to go ahead and let go and see if I can time it. 
cool. So there's my distance, so I can calculate how far I went in centimeters. Let's see, uh, 121, 2, 3, 4. So say like, what, 127? So that is very cool. 127 is my units. And it took about three seconds. So 127 in about three seconds. Okay. So I would want to do that a couple times. So I'll do it again. See if I get about, should get the same thing. And it's virtual. So I'm pretty sure it'll, we, lucky thing we don't have wind resistance or anything here. And you can do the same thing. Okay. So you can do that a couple times. And then what I'm going to do is raise my elevation. So I'm going to go up. I'm going to go up to 250 because that's right in the middle between 300 and 200. Boom. All right. Notice I'm not going to change any of these. They just have to stay the same. That's part of um, if I was doing a science experiment, you don't want to change in these other things because that would be a whole different experiment. Um, and remember, I have to do 145. That was my uh, release angle. Okay, so I'm going to time it again and see if that did make a difference. Let's see what happens. Whoa, it went further and it took four seconds. So it took four seconds and it went um, a little further here. So you'd want to do that a couple times and then go ahead and bring it all the way up to the very top 300. <laughs> so we made this launch arm really long, basically like you would do with the connects, because that's what the connects is going to do is um, have a short long launch arm, launch a marshmallow or whatever, a medium one and then a long one to see if that launch arm does that affect the uh, distance and time. So I'm going to do that to 145. Keep everything the same and I'm going to time it. It was about five seconds and notice it went um, a little bit further here. So I would do that a couple times to make sure my trials are consistent, make sure I'm getting the same data and making sure I didn't change anything here. Because if I change any of these three and my release angle, it's going to affect my um, data. So one more time, I'm going to pull that back. About five seconds. If you're using a timer, you can totally do that, but you can see now depending on where you measure is also important. Are you going to measure from behind the ball? Or are you going to measure in where the ball is in front? Now, wherever you decide to do that, that's got to stay the same as well. Um, so do you want to measure it from here? Or do you want to measure in front? So in back or in front? As long as you're consistent, that's the thing about science experiments. As long as you're consistent, um, it doesn't matter. Consistency is key. You can't just keep changing everything because then you don't know what's affecting the uh, speed of the ball here, the distance and time. Could be several factors, but if I keep everything the same and I just change this um, level, then I can totally see Oh, my light went out. I can totally see um, if this longer arm is affecting things. And it, just by doing this a couple of times, it does look like um, the longer this elevation is, the higher um, it does affect um, how far it goes. Does it affect the speed? You can totally calculate that. Remember, take the distance, divide by time, and see if the speed is the speed increasing. Is it getting faster or is it getting slower or is it not? Uh, changing speed too much. So very cool that we have a very nice virtual catapult. This is probably one of the best ones I've seen um, because you can change it around. You can get it the way you want. Um, you can set it, so make sure you set it the way you want. Um, keep those variables the same. Remember, we're just going to change the um, elevation. So that launch arm length here. I'll start at 200 and then go to I would do 250 because that's right in the middle and then do go ahead and do your 300 um, record your trials do it you know uh, five times would be a good good thing the more the merrier obviously the more times you repeat an experiment the more validation you have of the data you know that data is good um, so go ahead and check that out 
All right, well, I hope you have fun with that virtual catapult. Um, I know it's not the same thing, but it really is cool. Um, the different pieces and lets you measure just like you would with a, um, a real catapult. Uh, remember, you also have the option at home. If you're at home, you can uh, make a really easy catapult using uh, some popsicle sticks, um, a spoon, and some rubber bands. So uh, you can make a very uh, simple catapult and do the same things you would with the Connects. All right, guys, excellent work. And we will see you next time. Take care.